another edition of the Contractor's Secret Weapon Weekly Podcast with your hosts, Dave Negri. This program is dedicated to helping contractors, remodelers, painters, roofers, roof cleaners, and business owners in the construction industry gain an unfair advantage over the competition. This program supplies you with information that the competition doesn't even know exists. This session brought to you by ContractorsSecretWeapon.com. Before we get into the conversation with you, I just want to do a shout out to our sponsors who help uh, promote uh, Contractor Secret Weapon and just some of the things that they have in store for you, our listeners. Hey, is your phone ringing enough? Do you want it to ring more with highly motivated and qualified buyers that contact you, the contractor, directly? No more waiting for the phone to ring. Just answer that phone. Best Home Services leads are dedicated to making your phone ring with motivated buyers that call you directly. There's no obligation to talk with them. Just go to ContractorSecretWeapon.com forward slash money. Fill out the form to secure your discount on the setup fee. Do it today. This special will not last forever. Check them out at ContractorSecretWeapon.com forward slash money. Running a small business is no easy task, and I should know because I had a service company for almost 10 years. I am the founder of a software called Radius Bomb, and it's unbelievable. And for all the listeners of Contractor Secret Weapon, we have a special offer for you to check out. If you want to send hyper-targeted, laser-focused, super-personalized postcards to your exact prospects using a map while sitting in your underwear, then go to ContractorSecretWeapon.com forward slash Radius Bomb, and we'll give you your first hundred postcards for free. Just go to ContractorSecretWeapon.com forward slash Radius Bomb. Hey, this is Dave Negri with Contractor Secret Weapon. I want to thank you so much for being with us today. I have a fun guest with us today, Ron Douglas. Ron is the husband and father of eight, kicked out of high school in the 10th grade. Ron went into street racing, broke his back in a car accident at 18. He was paralyzed from the waist down and learned to walk in, making a full recovery. He became a prison guard at 19 and was on the riot team by 20. He worked death row from 22 to 24 and gained a unique perspective on life while he was there. He has been an entrepreneur since he was 24 and has started and sold many companies. He has started several companies that were making over a million dollars in the first 12 months of operations. Ron Douglas has been on Discovery Channel, the Blue Collar Backer TV series for one series, one season. Realizing how much time it took away from his family, he turned down the offer for five more seasons, but continues to help people on a more personal level. He has been featured in the New York Times, MSNBC, CBS, and Fox, and he's the author of six figures in six months and loves the art of creating business. Hey Ron, it's so good to have you on the show today, and I'm super excited to talk with you about uh, how you help businesses and what you've done. You bet, man. Thanks for having me on. Cool. I'm excited. Tell us a little bit about your story so our listeners know where you came from and your road traveled. I think it's a very interesting story. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's been a long, crazy road. You know, I... uh, I uh, I started out, um, you know, my dad was in a, first of all, I was an army brat. Uh, I was an army brat. And so, you know, my dad was 22 years in the army. And, and so everywhere I went, I never met an entrepreneur, you know. I mean, everybody was working for the government. And so I didn't even realize what an entrepreneur really was. And I, I all I knew is I just didn't get along with anybody. <laughs> and uh, and uh, nobody thought like I did. And, and I never fit in and, and and when i say that never i mean never i mean i didn't fit in with family uncles and i mean everybody was the same way they all thought you know get a job work you know work your tail off and and retire and um it, it really wasn't until i was um in my 20s and i was working as a prison guard um and i had just gotten married and my wife actually, uh, bless her heart, made a mistake in our checkbook. <laughs> and I needed $25 for gas money to go back and forth to work. And so she budgeted it down. We had $25 in the bank account. Well, we actually had $0.25. Cents. The decimal point was in the wrong spot. Oh, wow. and, uh, and so on the way to work, 
I remember there was a wrecking yard, and so I swung into the wrecking yard uh, on the way to work the next day and asked him if he had any work and and uh, it would he, you know, and I was looking for cash and and uh, told him my situation, and he said, "Sure, come back the next day." And the next day was my day off, and so I went in there, and he had me cutting gas tanks out of cars that he was crushing, and oh, it was terrible work, 110 degrees out, and it was. It was nasty work, and all this old gas was falling on you as you're cutting these tanks out. And he's and he's sitting there and, and putting them in the crusher, and and uh, at the end of the day, I got twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was just like, oh, this is this sucks. And so I, <clears throat> but but what I did see there, which I guess nobody else really paid attention to, was you know he owned the land, he owned the he owned the shop free and clear. He owned his house free and clear. He owned all his vehicles. He didn't, you know, he owed nobody nothing. And I was like, man, I really like this, you know. And and uh, I asked to take him to lunch one day. And, and um, thank goodness he paid because I didn't even have enough money to buy lunch, really. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just told him, I said, look, man, I said, I really want to learn how to be the, you know do this entrepreneur thing i didn't realize that you could I, it, it didn't even come across this is how so far off the chain i was i mean i it, i didn't even realize that you could make money without a bond i the only way you could make money in my opinion was get a job right i, I didn't realize you could make money on your own um and so you know and that's what he taught me we started by flipping some cars and and doing some side work and and uh man once i realized i could make my own money without a boss holy moly i mean that changed my entire world um and i was gone it's free isn't yeah it? I, oh man i was gone and i didn't and then you want know, to talk about work life balance holy smokes man I, my wife didn't see me for like the next two years i mean i was just working like a madman i mean yeah i i was putting in ridiculous amount of time I, I, I want to say 80 hours a week easy. i mean it was just uh yeah i was all over the country i was picking up plastic cars and i was shipping them all over the world i was um yeah so i i went from basically you know buying a 75 dollar car and learning how to flip it and make money to i was shipping 18 wheeler loads of cars um you know three 18 wheeler loads a week out of my out of my uh yard in texas and i was shipping them all over the world i shipped everywhere to norway sweden australia denmark i mean yeah you name it i've shipped, shipped classic cars all over the world that's amazing that's amazing yeah but, uh, yeah I went, I went a little nuts <laughs> <laughs> but then you slowed down and you realized that yeah. uh it didn't even have to yeah, be that hard yeah i get perspective yeah it was I was, uh, my marriage was suffering pretty bad. And so I had to, I had to, uh, I, I just didn't understand it at the time. You know, I was just too young. Um, and so I had to get things back into perspective and slow down. And I, I, I sold that business and moved on to other businesses and, you know, learned a nice, you know, everybody calls it work life balance, but they're, honestly, I mean, it's just work life priorities is really, really good. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've come to the conclusion after many years that there's really no, really no real balance. I think that the only balance that I found is to be present where you are. Yep. Yep. Yeah, be present in the moment. Yeah. And and make priorities. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's really what it comes down to. If you want to spend more time with your, you know, I turned down five seasons. They wanted me to do five seasons on Discovery Channel, and I turned it down. Wow. Um, yeah, I bet you that's a big then, time commitment, huh? Yeah, I mean, that was, oh, man, it, it, was, it was a lot of time. And, and so, you know, when I, when I turned that down, you know, my wife even said, are you sure? <laughs> and, 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 and she was doing a happy dance in the background, right? Yeah, she was. She was she, you know, She's very supportive and, and uh, of all my endeavors, but you know, uh, you know, she she even asked, "Are you sure on this one?" Because you know, it was something I really wanted, and it was a uh, it was something I've always it was on my bucket list for a long time. But you know, I told her, I said, "You know, hey, I did I did one season that was, that was you know, I achieved my bucket list. I realized how much time it takes." Yeah, that's not what I want. 
So you you wrote a book, um, and it's uh, six figures in six months, and uh, it's I I uh, I read it twice. Um, one to, to oh, when I saw nice. it. yeah, I mean it was really good. I mean, and you know, for a lot of guys that are listening to this, I've just uh, completed not too long ago a, a series on goals and stuff like this, and and your book is just. Um, and I'll read it again because there's a, about, a lot of action steps in there that I really want to put down for me for some of the thoughts that I have floating around in my head. Uh, and uh, But, uh, you know, one of the things that you talked about in your book was um, uh, your vision board. And it's not really like I know I've, I've listened to a lot of guys talk about vision boards, about putting up your dreams and the stuff you want to achieve and stuff like that. But you're, from what I could gather out of, of what you're in your book is that it's it's really making your roadmap, your vision board, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, my, my vision board, and, and it's in my office every day. I come in there and I sit at the edge of my desk and I stare at my vision board, well, uh, you know, my, my roadmap, my blueprint. Right. And, and I look at it and I, and I start breaking it down on what I could do that day to knock out to do items that are on my on my board yeah so it's more of a it's it's more of a, a list than not a um how do i want to say it's not uh you're not putting out fires you're you're creating a reality yeah yeah i mean and everybody does a little bit different yeah. you know the I, you know, I see people that, you know, their vision board is a Lamborghini and a, and a big mansion and, and stuff like that, you know, and that's great if that's what you want, but that's, for me, that wasn't, well, first of all, you know, I'm six foot, 300 pounds, I don't even fit in a freaking Lamborghini, so I mean, I have no, I have no interest in, in one of those, so, I, I, you know, for me, uh, you know, my, my vision board is, is basically to-do items, I just, I break it down into six sections. And I, you know, I work everything in a six month plan. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, so anything I want to achieve, let's, let's, let's just say, um, let, let's use the example. You want to, you have a business and you're just starting out. Let, let's say it's a landscaping business and you want to be making a hundred thousand dollars in six months. Um, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a year, let's just say, um, you want to be doing that in six months. So I break my, my grid down into six six squares. And I, I number them one through six. And then I, I write in a six-month plan, in a sixth block, which should be your last block, I write what your business needs to be looking like in six months. Okay? Are you working by yourself? Probably not. You probably have two or three employees. Okay? So you need to write on there, have two or three employees. Um you know, I have a secretary answering the phone. So, you know, one, you know, one secretary. Um, I have multiple phone lines. Okay, so I need one phone line for the office. I mean, you know, and I need three phones for everybody out there in the field. And so I write that in, I write that in there. And then I work it backwards to so month five. What do I need to be doing in month five to achieve what I need to be doing in month six? So in month five, you know, hopefully, you know, let's, let's just bump it up a little bit. Month four, let's say you need to have those two employees in there so that you can be training them for month five and six. So I write in there on month four, hire, uh, hire two employees. Okay. And then, so in order, and so then I follow that backwards. Okay. So in order to hire somebody in month four, I need to be making X amount of calls. And, and by month three. So let's just let's just use easy terms. I need 50 calls a week um, in month three. I put that as a goal. I need 50 calls a week. Uh, and, and so anyway, so that's what I do, and that's how I, I mind map basically. And I, I mean, uh, you, you know, nobody makes a trip. You can't drive from New York to Los Angeles without at least looking at a road map, or you know, that's old school, of course. You know, GPS now, but you know what I'm talking about. You got you, you got to have a direction. You, can't, you don't. Nobody just jumps in the car and goes, "Okay, I, I know that LA is kind of west out there, so I'll just kind of like yeah. head that way." And, you know, and you don't um, really want to take the scenic route. Exactly, <laughs> and, and, and and so I, I don't understand why people do that with business. You know, it's like, yeah, I want to start a business, and yeah, I I I, I could see myself making a million dollars with this idea, and so I've already got, uh, you know, I already got my business name registered. I've got my website. 
And I'm like, okay, great. I mean, that's basically saying, okay, I bought a roadmap and I've got the keys in my car. <laughs> But that's it, okay? Yeah, I mean, have you gassed it up? Uh, have you figured out which way you're going? I mean, you know what? Where you, you know, which direction? I mean, nobody's, you know. So, so that's what I look at, and I just I work out this six grid, the six month blueprint, so that you actually have a, a real firm direction on how to make that money. And the nice part about it is, is I'm envisioning it is that uh, you know you've got your goal, your your monetary goal down there too. So you know you're and you're working, you're taking everything and you're working backwards to from the from the from where you want to be to the beginning of where you are. No matter where you are, whether you're starting up or even if you're a seasoned business, it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, well, but again, I got that uh, honestly. I mean, I, I stole this pretty much from from all my travels. You know? I mean. I've traveled the world. I've motorcycled all over the place. Wow. And I, and I, I, you know, I don't grab the, you know, I, I never grab the, um, the map and say, okay, you know, say I'm in Colorado right now and I want to go to Alaska. I don't, I don't look at Wyoming and work my way and work my way up. I look at Alaska and I go, okay, so, oh, this looks like a nice road down here through California. And then, you know, then I work my way back to Colorado. So I'm always looking at the two endpoints and figuring out how to, how to meet them and, and the best way to do it. And so um, that's what, uh, that's basically what the six-month blueprint is. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, because you, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's, and it's, and it's, it's simple and it's, in its simplest forms. And that's the nice part about it. It's not, uh, you know, you got to, it. It just takes a lot of it takes all the guessing work out. It's just you're throwing everything in place to uh, what you want to do, where you want to go. Um, that was, uh, I mean, one of, I think it was uh, Darren Hardy's book. I forget which one it was, and that's how he did everything. He started with the end and worked backwards to where he wanted to start to get to move forward, which was which is really brilliant because we we most of the time we don't do that. We just think, oh, this is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. And let me get as much business as I can, and I'll, I'll figure it out on the way, which is pretty much the wrong approach. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the scenic route. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's totally the scenic route. And so, yeah, you need you need to you need to map it out. I mean, and it doesn't take that long. It really doesn't. And you can fill it in as you go. Just get the basics down um you know write the six you know draw six freaking squares or take six pieces of paper on the wall that's what i did when i first started i literally ripped six pieces of paper out of a notebook and taped them on a wall and 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 labeled one through six and 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 that's how i started i wrote on on number six i said you know that's your vision board that's what i want okay i want my house you know i want you know my five thousand square foot house whatever blah 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 and this is what it's going to look like my truck and this is what i want and, you know that's your vision is number six okay then one through five is how to get there one of the cool things i noticed as i was reading through your book i mean one your your uh your saying is nothing to it but do it and uh yeah. i think that's pretty profound it's sort of um I'm sort of in that boat. I mean, you sound like you're the type of guy, okay, this is what I want to do. Let's go do it. Instead of, I know, you know, you've got your vision board, but it's not like I need to find out a gazillion data bytes of information. I'm going to start and get it done and we'll figure out most of it on the way. Yeah. 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 I, you know, a lot of people use this, use the word, uh, you know, jump out and build your parachute or pack your parachute on the way down, uh, you know, kind of thing. You know, I don't know if I agree with that term 100%. Yeah, I know. But, but, but I do agree with get out there and freaking do it. Yeah. Golly, there's so many people. And I meet, you know, every time I go to a speaking engagement, you know, it drives me nuts sometimes because they, they come up to me in hordes and they, and they say the same thing over and over, you know, and, oh, I've been, I've been wanting to do this business for like three years. Well, freaking do it. I mean, what, you, what yeah. <laughs> What are you waiting on? Three years? What a waste! I mean, I just—that's what I look at. I go, I just look at him and go, "You just wasted three years." I mean, how in the world could you be? Literally, there, there's never been a business that 
I've gone from, well, my book is a prime example. I went, <laughs> you, you, you read the book, yeah. and so you know, I wrote that book and posted it in 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had and it so all in your I, mind, so, I mean, yeah, it wasn't like you, yeah, had, like, you had to think about a lot of it. Exactly. And so it's like, just get it out there. And, and then, you know, now I need to rewrite it, of course, and, and update it and fix some things on it. And yeah, there's a lot of errors in it, but I got it done, right. you know, and I sold thousands of copies of that book, <laughs> to be honest. Um, the, you know, and, and, and you'll see by the reviews, everybody says the same thing. They say, yeah, this guy needs a, you know, needs somebody that, that, that knows how to write to re, re, rewrite this thing. But the information solid exactly i mean that's all that mattered to me and so as long as the information was solid and i wasn't giving out crap that's all i cared about and and i didn't want to waste time um you know you know and i and i think i even wrote this in the book now that i say now that i'm saying this but you know my my vision for for writing that book was going to be you know at my cabin retreat up in the mountains overlooking the lake you know sitting in the window you know writing my book um, in reality, I got tired of thinking about it and said, I'm just going to do it. And I sat down at my desk where my dirty dishes from lunch were still sitting on the left hand side of me. And my, my cell phone was on the right hand side of me and a stack of papers were uh, in front of me. And, and I, I still got the book done. Just, I just, you know, there's no excuse to it. Just nothing to it, but to do it. I say that every, every day. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's pretty amazing. I remember, Years ago, when we were doing uh, buying and selling houses, we would go to seminars. Uh, and, uh, oh, crap. May, alarm went off. Um, we'd buy, go to these seminars on, you know, and I'd go for nuggets, just to get nuggets on what we could do to make more money uh, in a transaction, stuff like that. And I sat next to a lady one day, and, and I go, how long have you been doing this? She goes, uh, I says, well, I, I'm always at seminars. How much have you spent on seminars? Probably about thirty thousand dollars. I said, how many houses have you bought? None. <laughs> I go, why? I'm afraid. Right. I'm afraid. afraid of what? You just blew thirty grand on nothing. If you blew thirty grand on a house, at least you would get a, a, a real seminar if you didn't make any money on it. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, and and this is something I tell people all the time too. Is you know. Yeah. You know, getting educated is, is fine. You know, people ask me all the time, should I go to college? Should I not go to college? Blah blah blah. And you know that that it, you know, in my opinion, it's kind of a personal choice. Right. But at the same time, I always tell people this. I mean, why? You know, if you're going to college to learn business, then why not go and learn business from a successful business person? I mean, why would you go to college and learn from somebody who's never ran a business how to run a business? It's like reading a book. Right. right, expensive book. Well, well even worse yeah. because at least the person that wrote the book might have run, or might have started business. You know, the the person at the top at the front of the, at the front of the group, you know, he's a professor who's never ran a business. Um, so, you know, I think that's the worst scenario. Now, if you want to be a lawyer, obviously you need to go to college. You know, a doctor, or whatever. You, but you know, if you want if you want to run your own business or you want to be an entrepreneur, then freaking go learn from an entrepreneur. Don't waste your time uh, with somebody who's never done it. Yeah, because you'll just learn the basics, and you're gonna have to go. You're gonna have to go to the person that did it anyways. Yeah, you're gonna have to go relearn everything anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, I noticed in your book you're a big proponent of mastermind alliances. Yeah. And, absolutely. And I think one of the things that uh, really perked my interest was that uh, you actually created, you did one, one, went one step further in your business and you created one within your business. How did, Tell us how that works out. Um, well, yeah, with my employees, yeah. So what I did is, you know, my philosophy, and I, and I say this every time I speak, is you know the fastest way to help yourself is to help somebody else. Right. And I thought, why am I keeping this from my employees? And... If if your employees are with you five years from now, I I totally feel like you're doing them a disservice. Does that make sense? I do. I, I yeah. Unless they don't have the just the drive to be in business for themselves, but I do understand what you're saying. I think that exactly. as, as business owners, it's our responsibility, and no matter what what um, what type of business we have, is to is to train 
everyone so that they can be the best them they can be so that no matter what they do, whether they go for another job, they're trained. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because when I started that mastermind group, I, and I did, I bought, I bought a copy of, uh, I believe it was um, Napoleon Hill's 17 Principles. I, I bought that for, uh, for them for Christmas. Well, you know, at the time, the service business that I ran was a wildlife company, and so the guys were in trucks all the time running around checking traps and stuff like that. And, uh, and so I bought it on CD, and, and we talked about it every morning. Um, and so these guys got into it because they would listen to it, and then we talk about it the next morning at, at the meeting in the office. And so, um, and then we, and then I started holding private sessions with each one of them, saying, "Okay, so what are your financial goals? What are your, you know, what are your long term goals? What do you want to do? I mean, do you really want to do this the rest of your life?" And some of them did. I mean, some of, one guy, I mean, um, uh, his name was David, and, and I believe he still works for that company. I sold that company. He still. He's their lead deck, but that's what he loves doing is doing just wildlife and, and capturing wildlife. And so, um, you know, he was part of that original mastermind when I first started that. Now, another guy, he ran off and, and he he runs a water distribution company out of Arizona. He started him and his brother. And another guy bought the company from me. Another guy started his other started his own company doing um uh, I believe he started a landscape company and, and he's doing that and he's very successful with it. So yeah, so out of that small group and there was probably, uh, I don't know, I'm not totally accurate on this, but I, there was five solid guys in that group and out of that group, four of them became business owners. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. That, uh, because let's face it. I mean, a lot of I know a lot of business owners. They they gripe and complain. Well, I'm going to train this guy. He's going to do this. He's going to do this. and then he's going to either go into business for himself or go to work for someone else. Well, that's the reality of it. Well, yeah. So make it- well, and, you know, and, and here's the silly part about that: when people say that, is yeah, you're right. I absolutely trained this guy to compete against me, but he was smart enough to see it was smarter for him to buy me out than it was to compete against me because he knew how good I was. Right. And so. So if you train them right, they'll also think about that. And you're tra- you're basically training. I, I I have never. Well, I take that back. One one or two companies I've actually posted up for sale. Every other company has been purchased by somebody who knew me, um, and it's because they they either knew how I ran the business or they worked for me and they saw the opportunity and, and found the money to buy me out. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's a great way to look at it. I mean, you might as well look at it that way from a positive standpoint than, than from a negative because then you're just – you're not treating your employees correctly. If Right, if, yeah. right. And, and, and you never know which employee, trust me. I, I've had it out of left field. I mean, I've had guys, I mean, couldn't manage money if their life depended on it, you know. And, and you know, you pay them on Friday and they're broke by Monday, you know, kind of guy. And uh, I'll be doggone on if their grandfather or something didn't pass away and leave them a whole, whole bunch of money <laughs> and and uh, gave them an opportunity to buy me out. You know what I mean? And so, and it was funny. Once they got that big chunk of money, they they, they knew what they wanted to do with it, and they got serious, and they quit burning through money, and, and they grew up really quick. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That's really great. So I know that um, – uh, one of the things that that you talk uh, a lot about is the importance of journaling. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, so take us through that uh, fairly. That's really the um, honestly that's probably the heart of everything I do um, is uh, journaling. I journal every day, and I don't journal like most people. So most people journal like, yeah, this is what happened yesterday, and you know, blah blah blah. Sort of like a Facebook post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not what I journal. I, I write the future. I focus on what I'm going to do, not what I did. Um, so when I journal, like like today's entry, just to give you an example, uh, we recently sold our house and we bought 50 acres. And so my journal entry was pretty much, hey, we bought 50 acres. The views are beautiful. Um, this is the last place that I, I plan on ever buying as far as moving anywhere. Um we're super excited, and I talk about the views a little bit, and then I talk about my plan. Okay, it's got you know, 
it's got six cabins on it, and I plan on renovating those and making those this, and doing this, and you know, and, and I just talk about what I'm going to do with the property, nice. and and I'm basically writing my future. You know what I mean? And so um, that's my next book is, is basically teaching people how to write their own future, and, and and really it comes down to this. I mean, journal about what you want, not about what you do. Yeah, because then you're living in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then, so, and, and you can write about what you did if you want to. I mean, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. You know, no, just, take a paragraph through and do that, but don't focus. Your whole journal shouldn't be about what already happened. Your 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 main focus should be, you know, if, if that's what you need to do to warm up, you know, to start writing, just to start writing, then that's fine, and, and get kind of get in the groove. But here's what happens. There's something special and there's something miraculous that happens when you put pen to paper. And I'm not talking about typing a journal. I'm talking about actually writing it. Okay. I, my wife sits down and she gives me 99 cents the spiral notebooks. I get these, these cheap ones. Every time school the school year uh-huh. happens, she goes, spiral notebooks, nothing fancy. I don't have no leather bound journals or anything. And then I just sit in there and I just start journaling. And so when I start writing about an idea, okay, so to give you an example. I, I wanted to start the National Self Reliance Organization at one time. And I had no idea what I was talking about, but I started journaling about it. So this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to train people on how to be more self-reliant. I want to teach people how to, um, you know, go back to the basics and learn some of the old skills that they've, you know, that our generations have lost and blah blah blah. And by by day three. You know, you know, in each one of these journal entries was probably a page, maybe maybe a page and a half. And then by three, by day, no, it was probably day four. I think it was day four. Um, I was sitting there journaling, and something unlocked in my mind, and I wrote nine pages in like literally. I I, I didn't even know where the time went. It's like five minutes, and I wrote nine pages, and it was a complete blueprint of the National Self Reliance Organization. Wow. Yeah. 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 My mind completely unlocked it. And it just, I, and it was so clear as day what I needed to do. I'm going to start an expo and this is how I'm going to do it. And this, these are the locations I'm going to do those expos and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, man, I even, I even went so far as to write in their names of companies that I was going to contact who would sponsor the expo. <clears throat> And later did. So I went back, you know, so as I was doing speaking engagements, I would pull up copies of my old journal and put it up there. And then, and then in the next slide, I'd post it next to the New York Times article from three years later showing that I had already achieved what I journaled about. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. So you, so you are blueprinting the future. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's all about the blueprint. It's all about re- focusing on the future. That's really all it comes down to. It really comes down to having direction and making action every day. Cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, we're we're pretty much running close to our, our, our time. Is there anything in the back of your mind you think that we that we may have missed that you wanted to add? Well, um, I'm actually willing to, um, if you're interested, um, uh-huh. for your listeners there, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give uh, a copy of that book uh, in, it, in its um, entirety to, uh, to your audience for free. Awesome. Uh, they can go to rondouglas.me, that's rondouglas.me, and um, I will have it up there uh, by the time that this airs, <laughs> and they can sign up for it there. Um, also, I'll give them an opportunity. I have a, I have a close. Um, if they go there to sign up for the book, in that email, they'll also get an opportunity to sign up um, for a closed uh, Facebook group, which I am pretty active in, and I go in there every day. Um, and remember, my, my, my philosophy is the fastest way to help yourself is to help somebody else. So I always tell people to go in there um, and look for Facebook posts that they can answer and help other people and post questions they have themselves and if uh, other people can't answer it I'll jump in there and answer it uh, for, for you. Um, you you can usually get answers to your questions within 24 hours cool that's awesome that's really awesome how else can we get a hold of you your, your um, yeah yeah Ron Emmy would probably be the fastest okay. way or uh, Facebook um, forward slash Ron Douglas okay. 
and you can message me um, through the Facebook, and I'm usually either me or my uh, uh, my assistant will uh, get back to you pretty quick. Cool beans. This has really been fun. I really appreciate you spending time with us today and just you know uh, pouring out stuff that you put in your book because it's just so much common sense stuff that I think a lot of times we bypass the common sense stuff and, and try to make things too difficult. Yeah, I agree 100%. <laughs> Keep it simple, uh, and, and there's nothing to it but doing it, right? That's right. Nothing to it but to do it. Cool. Uh, Ron, thanks so much for uh, being with us today. I really appreciate it. Not a problem, bud. You take care, and, and uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the book. Cool. Thanks. Let me, take care. Uh, Bye. Super. Uh, that worked? Yeah, that worked. I... Um, I recorded it on three different things, so we'll, it'll work somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I turned my phone on. I turned the one on my computer, so it's got to work, you know. <laughs> uh, awesome. Perfect, perfect. Well, is there anything else you need from me? No, that's it. Thanks so much. Not a problem. If you have any questions, uh, matter of fact, I'll be sure to send out an invitation to the Facebook group there. You can join All right, um, as well. Appreciate that. That'd be great. And, uh, if you if you have any questions, feel free to jump in there, and and, uh, and uh, I'll be sure to answer them. Cool. Thanks so much. You bet, bud. Right, Take care. We'll see you. Bye. Again, I want to thank you for joining us and investing your time with us today. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And if you did, go to iTunes and give us a shout out. You can also go to our website, www.contractorsecretweapon.com and check out today's episode and leave us a comment in the bottom of the page. And if you haven't gotten your 15 secret weapon strategies to getting higher end customers, get it while you're at the website. Also, I want to thank again our sponsors for keeping this podcast alive for your profit making pleasure. And so go be profitable this week. Work smarter, not harder, and learn how to leverage your time and your knowledge so that you can be more profitable. Again, see you next week. Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast with Dave Negri. We would love to hear your comments about this episode, so visit us online at www.contractorsecretweapon.com and let us hear your thoughts. If you were listening via iTunes, please leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive, the more other contractors will benefit from this show. Thank you, and see you next time here on the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast.